Okay, hello, welcome. Um, in this video, um, I'm going to talk about the about as, about an asymptotic analysis of the growth rates of common algorithms. Okay, so I hope to cover these topics. Now, this is really just an introduction. I'm really going to go over uh, kind of the main point. So, to me, I mean, this is an important topic. Um, uh, it, it can be really useful in the real world if, if as long as you know kind of the basics of these things. But, but you don't really need to, to you know. So, I mean. There's a whole area, uh, th this is really getting into some really theoretical computer science, right? But but this has some very practical things, too. So uh, in terms of um, what we run into every day, though, it, it's very useful. So there's lots of common algorithms, lots of common patterns that you can spot in code um, that, that, that help you understand, you know, what's possible and what's not possible. So um, I'm going to cover, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll touch on all of these, so the difference between best and worst case and average case. Um, and we'll talk about uh, the, these notation, this formal notation, the big O, big omega, and big theta. Um, and, um, uh, but but I, I want to first look at, uh, I'm actually going to bring up, you know, so the way, the way I learn, learn these things best is to actually look at real examples in code. So I, I first want to look at, at some real examples and then kind of work backwards then to, to talking about some of these points here. So, but with that said, um, uh, before I look at the, the, the code examples that I want to look at first, let me, let me bring up these simplifying rules because we're gonna, I'm going to be talking about these uh, when I show you the, these code examples. Uh, we don't really need number one for this uh, video. Number one is just kind of a, a transitive rule for these kinds of analysis of algorithms. So uh, if, if F is in uh, uh, order of magnitude, if its growth rate is G of N, and, and if G of N is in, uh, if its growth rate is the order of H of N, then F of N is also in that again. Um, so let me, let me concentrate on two, three, and four. So two, two says that uh, if we have if, if f the function f or your algorithm f is some order as a growth rate k times g of n, then um, f of n is just in the uh, has a growth rate of g of n. You can effectively ignore multiplicative constants when you're talking about these uh, asymptotic um, growth rates. Okay. Uh, the second one is that um, um, if uh, F1 is some order G1 growth rate and F2 has some growth rate G2, then F1 plus F2 is just the maximum of these. So you can ignore the less expensive one, okay? So this is important. So in, in practical sense, what this means is that if you have code that runs in sequence, so if you have like a really fast, um, you know, a very slow growth rate, uh, order n, and then after that you go into like a order n squared. Uh, effectively, the the the, the slower one um, is not going to really impact your your um, the, the your overall idea of of how your algorithm grows with respect to the input size. Uh, so you only keep the more expensive part. All right. Um, and then the third one, kind of in a similar way, for, for code, um, if, if F1 has the, a growth rate G of 1 and F2 is G2, um, and if they, instead of running in sequence in code, uh, if we have F1 times F2, then it's in order uh, of your growth rate. You have to multiply the growth rates together. So again, you know, this, this is kind of a formal, formalism here. It might be confusing, but what this is saying in a practical sense is that if you have loops, so if you have a loop where some action is repeated a number of times, then the cost of the action multiplied by the number of times, the, the, the number of times the loop happens, is going to be your, your growth rate. So you have to multiply those, okay? So let, let's see what we mean by that here. Um, so as usual, I'll post this example code with the video. Um, now, I've got, if you look through this sample code, I've got a bunch of little functions that really, um, you know, uh, uh, um, Illustrate the 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 the, the basic uh, algorithmic growth rates that you, that you ought to be familiar with after taking an undergraduate class like this in, in algorithms and data structures. Okay, um, so we're going to look at a, a constant algorithm, um, which is known as an order one growth rate, uh, an order n algorithm, or um, um, uh, also known as a linear growth rate, um, um, and I have some others, but uh, Two times in n squared algorithm, so so growth rate of n squared, um, uh, log n algorithm, so 
uh, in login um, and and uh, and then an, an example of an exponential algorithm uh, two to the n. Okay, so yeah, sorry for scrolling past these so uh, so quickly. I want to go through them um, um, uh, one at a time here. So let's start with the basic idea of a constant uh, growth rate. Okay, so. Um, So the first thing to understand about the analysis of algorithms is that um, all of these growth rates are specified in terms of n, the input size, okay? So for all of this, this example code I'm using here, we're going to use uh, our input size as 100, okay? So think of this as our algorithms working on a list of 100 items that we have to sort, or maybe something, like, or, or a list of 100 items that we have to search. So, so those are examples of, of what we mean by n. So, and, and, and it's uh, just um, 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 traditional to use n to represent that, the input size, okay? So let's, um, um, let's go into the order one algorithm here. So a constant algorithm basically, or, or you know, an, an O1, big O1, um, means that um, it, it's, it's doing some number of operations, but it doesn't depend on the input size, okay? So often, you know, before you actually get into your real algorithm, you have to do a lot of initialization and things like that. So those are all constants. So, so no matter what size your, you know, your list is that you're going to sort or search or whatever, um, you might have to do things like um, um, initialize your indexes, like for a binary search. So uh, uh, create like a, a, an integer to keep track of the midpoint and, and then initialize it to the value in the middle of the list or, or things like that. So, so just think of basic initialization. So, um, so, so when, when the algorithm, so you notice here, I mean, all we're doing um, is initializing a variable to five. So, uh, so another another quick thing I should point out here. So, so you should read our supplementary textbook about this. But so when when you do analysis of algorithms like this, uh, what you're analyzing. I mean, you know, you're not measuring like clock time. You know, the amount of time for various reasons. Our, you know, our, our textbook uh, goes into those aren't a good measure. Um, for, for comparing algorithms. So, I mean, if you run your uh, different algorithms but on different computers, faster or slower, you know, it's, it's hard to use the, their actual time as measurement. So what we do for analysis of algorithms is we, we measure the number of operations as a function of the input size that you're dealing with, okay? And operations is loosely defined. It, it can mean whatever's important for your algorithm. Okay, so in, in for all these examples, I'm using incrementing um, a sum or something like that. And and every time we do a basic operation, um, we count it here. Okay. So anyway, so for for an order one, a constant time one, though, we we, we it's not going to be it's not going to matter what the input size is. Uh, we're just going to do the same constant operation. So, so uh, by um, convention, we call that big O1. So order one or constant time um, algorithm. All right. So um, yeah. So if we print that out, so you notice. So even though the input size was a hundred, um, um, if you look at the count, so so afterwards. Every time before I call one of these algorithms, I reset the count back to zero, and then afterwards we um, um, uh, call this report algorithm analysis to report the actual number of operations. So in this case, we had a constant time of one. I mean, your constant could be bigger. I mean, you could have to do 100 operations every time uh, when you're initializing something, or 1,000, you know. So in that case, um, uh, it would be 0, 0,100 or 0, 0,001,000, but, but it wouldn't depend on n. So let's look at the simplest, uh, uh, big O of, of N uh, growth rate, or, or this is known as linear time growth rate, okay? So um, let's go ahead and step into that. So the, the pattern, I mean, and, and this is very simple, so, so you'll see this all the time, the pattern for um, a algorithm that has big O running time or growth rate of, of N runs in linear time is that you just have a simple loop that goes from 1 to N, and you do something... Uh, you do uh, one or some number, some constant number of operations every time. So, uh, again, if we were doing something non-constant inside of this loop here, um, so if we were calling another function or had another loop in here, then we're, that we might not be um, um, order n anymore, big O of n. 
Uh, but here in this example, we're just doing a loop that goes from one to n, and inside of here we do or we do order order one. So so we do a constant. Uh, number of operations. So if you remember back to my rule four where I talked about that um, that um, um, uh, here, that it's multiplicative, this is exactly what we're talking about here, that we have a loop um, that happens in times and inside we have an O1 operation, a constant operation. So the overall growth rate of, of a simple algorithm like this is going to be O1 times ON, which is ON. Which, which is big O of, of N, all right? So, and what we mean by that big O of N is, is that it grows linearly with the, with the size of the input. So if I have, uh, if my size is 100, like it is for all these examples, I'm going to do this loop 100 times, and I'm going to perform 100 operations, since I'm doing O1 operations inside the loops. If, if my input is size 100 million, I'm going to do this loop 100 million times, and I'm going to perform... 100 million of my basic operations, whatever these operations are. All right. So you know, so you should you should obviously be able to see that um, my my count of my operations is going to be n, you know, 100 plus one here. So so this this algorithm is actually O n plus O one because we do a little bit of constant initialization before we get into the loop. We just do one operation before the loop, and then we do n. O1 operations inside of the loop. So it's actually uh, n plus 1, all right? Um, and um, so let's uh, go ahead and step out of that. I'm going to have to um, continue on until there, and then we can step out so we don't go, go over that loop uh, 100 times. So there. So after calling the O order in algorithm or linear time algorithm, um, like I said, um, um, you know, the, the, theoretically the upper bound on the, the calculation since it's O n and is 100 is 100. Uh, we did actually 101 operations because it was actually n plus one, o, o n plus one, right? But uh, again, by rule, um, this, this is um, um, uh, this is uh, the, something. Um, that comes out of rule one, rule, rule three, and two here as well. So, uh, actually, this is directly an example of rule three. So, in this case, the the linear code that I show you had a had one that was O one. So, the initializing initializations beforehand were order one or constant time, and then inside the loop was an O order n growth rate, big O n. So, so we had a one plus n. Um, and so in terms of overall of the growth rate, we can ignore the, the less expensive, the, the constant time one. Because, again, what, what that means is that, you know, that the constant time one is, is insignificant as n gets big. Okay? So if, if n was, uh, was a, a million or a billion, that initialization at the beginning becomes less and less significant. You know? so, so you can ignore that in terms of, of how... You know how how, how much time is gonna, your algorithm is going to take. All right. So that was our linear or or order in big O in um, algorithm here. Um, so um, so uh, back to the example of the uh, the rule um, uh, two here, ta talking about that you can ignore uh, multiplicative constants. Um, so and and I'll come back to this a little bit later. Uh, the, We'll make this clear, but but if you look in this algorithm, so let's go. Let me let me set a breakpoint right uh, right here before the next one, uh, and then let's uh, step in here. So in this algorithm, um, we have you know our initializations at the top. So this is constant O1, and we have a, a loop that goes from one to n, and then we have a second loop also that goes from one to n. Okay, so uh, now in this case, I mean, th th these are both the same order of magnitude, okay? Um, so, you know, get O n plus O n. So, so we actually end up with two n operations happening here. So as you can imagine doing this, you know, this is going to cause 100 operations to happen if, if n is 100. And then another 100 operations will happen. So we'll actually have 200 operations plus 
uh, the, plus adding on the, the constant initialization at the beginning, okay? So let me go ahead and continue on to my breakpoint out here. So, um, so the, what that rule two is saying is that, um, again, um, uh, even though actually we do two in operations inside this loop, as n gets bigger, there, there's, there's no effective difference in terms of growth rate from a 2n versus a 1n or, or, or a big O n um, um, algorithm, okay? So um, um, uh, the, 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 the growth rate is the same. So if I, if I need to do, if I need to handle an input twice as big, you know, in from 100 to 200, it's going to take me twice as much time in, in, in both cases. So for a, an O-N, it would take me twice as much time. I'd have to do 200 operations. And for an O-2-N, op, uh, it, it would still take me twice as much time. So however much time I was taking to do my, my 2-N, my 200 operations, I would have to take twice as much time to do the 400 operations for the 2-N. Okay? But, but, but my time is only doubling in both cases. The growth is the same. Um, uh, is linear in relationship to the change in the size of it, all right? So like I said, uh, we'll come back to that. I should, I should uh, uh, let's, let's move on. So uh, the other important thing that I want you to get from this, this example code, I'm only showing the, the basic one. So if nothing else um, from, from this unit of our course, you ought to understand what we mean by a big O in or a linear algorithm, uh, a big O uh, in squared or a quadratic algorithm, uh, a log in or a logarithmic time algorithm, uh, and an in log in algorithm, um, and, and an exponential algorithm, okay? Um, oh, and, and I should have mentioned, and, and I wanted to, uh, maybe a better example of what I should have done for these is, I did want to mention uh, uh, for each one of these what uh, typical algorithm that you're already familiar with uh, is an example of that type of an algorithm. So if you're doing a linear search, where you have a list of, of size of n items and you just search starting at the first one to the second one to the third one, that is a big O of, of n algorithm, okay? And here I can, I can throw in, talk a little bit about the best case, uh, the average case and the worst case, okay? So when we talked about linear search, uh, we talked about its average case um, a little bit. So in the best case, you know, if I have to search a list of 100 items, might, and I'm doing a linear search, it might be that the very first item is the item I'm searching for. So I end up just doing a, a one operation, so, so big O of one, okay? But that's my best case, all right? But in the worst case, maybe the item isn't in the list at all, okay? Or it's the very last item in the list. So, so for both of those examples, you get worst, be, worst case behavior. So you have to search all in items in the list. So you have to do 100 operations. Like a, so for the, for the linear search, your operation, you have to think of as the comparison. So is the item I'm searching for equal to the, the list at index, whatever index I'm currently looking at, right? So, so in the worst case, if, if I have 100 items, and so n is 100, I would have to, to do 100 comparisons to determine uh, that, that the item isn't in the list, you know, um, if it's a failed search or to, if it happens to be the very last item, okay? And then what we talked about, though, so uh, it, it's more typical if, if the order is, so this, this requires a little bit of statistics, you know, so a little bit of a statistical background to, um, to prove this, although it's not too tough. But um, if, the or, if the items in your list are pretty random, you know, um, um, and if you're, if you're always looking for an item that's usually in the list, so you, so you don't have huge numbers of um, searches for items that aren't in the list that are going to have a result in a failed search. So in that case, you expect to have to search on average about half of the items. So the average case um, is n divided by 2. And since one half times n, is, so one half is just a multiplicative constant. So the growth rate in the average case for for the the linear search that has an average case of one half n is still a, a, an O n algorithm. So, so it's still a big O of n or a linear time algorithm. All right. Um, Okay, so let's look at n squared. So n squared is going to be our first example of, uh, well, not exactly our first example, but our, our first example of, of, of a more complex co um, uh, application of, um, of rule four here. 
um, where where we have to multiply um, um, the 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 number of actions in order to get up to, to figure out the growth rate. Okay, so let's look at our m squared here. Um, step into that. So. Um, So here, here's the the, the n squared algorithm. So um, you, we've run, we've we've done some some n squared algorithms uh, just last week. Um, if, if you're in my course uh, for this video, so the naive sorting algorithms like bubble sort um, and insertion sort are all uh, a big O of n squared. Okay, so so they have a uh, um, 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 a growth rate of, of n squared. Um, so, so they are examples of this type of algorithm. So any, anytime the pattern for an n squared is anytime you have a, a nested loop, so an outer loop and an inner loop, and both loops, the outer loop and the inner loop, um, execute n times, the, the number of, of inputs, um, right? So um, so here, th this, this is going to be exactly uh, order n squared plus a little bit of initialization at, at the beginning here. But inside of this loop, the outer loop executes exactly n times, and then the inner loop also executes exactly n times. So the number of times these statements inside the inner loop actually execute is n times n, or n squared, right? Because the, when, when the outer loop is 1, we do this n, and when the outer loop is 2, we do this again n times, so it's n plus n plus n. Uh, added up uh, n times or n squared, right? So, so yeah, I mean that, that that's going to be we're going to end up doing uh, n squared operations. So if if input size is a hundred, uh, you know we don't do uh, linear like like two n two hundred. What we're doing n squared. So we're going to be doing ten thousand uh, operations, uh, you know, ten thousand times in this inner loop for uh, for an input size of a hundred, right? Um, oh, I must have gone a little bit too far. I skipped past something. Sorry about that. Um, um, so, so yes, yeah, so if you look at the n squared one, um, so yeah, in, in terms of the number of actual operation counts, it is ten thousand plus the the, the constant uh, initialization at the top, which in this case we only are doing one uh, initialization. So it's ten thousand ones. But, but we have an order. So our big O is n squared. The expected is ten thousand operations. Okay, um, so I, I skipped over this, so um, I'll just uh, scroll back up to that one. So um, another example, another common pattern um, uh, here. So the the uh, the bubble sort. Um, uh, actually, I think all all three of the algorithms that we looked at uh, for sorting, not, not naive sorting algorithms, uh, were more like this pattern. Okay, so the outer loop would, would execute exactly n times. So remember for bubble sort that we, we always execute the outer loop n times, but the inner loop we would only go up from um, the beginning up to the, the, the end of the list that had been sorted so far. So here the inner loop goes from 1 up to whatever outer um, uh, is in this case. So bubble sort, it started going from 1 to n, but as the outer loop executed, the inner loop would go less and less. Here, the inner loop, the first time the inner loop executes, it only executes one time. Then when outer iteration is two, it executes two times and so on. So the actual number of times that this, um, that this statement here inside of the inner loop executes is one plus two plus three. So it's the, the sum of the series, one plus two plus three plus dot, 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 plus n. Okay? And the sum of that series is n times uh, n plus one um, divided by two, uh, right? So yeah, n, n times n plus one divided by two. That's that's what the sum of, of that series is. But you know, again, this is still a, a, a big O of n squared algorithm. It's just uh, the top is n squared plus n, and the, so it's one half times n squared plus one half times n. Okay. So again, and then by rule three, you know, you can ignore the one half times n. That that's a slower growth rate than the n squared. And by the rule. Um, uh, two, you can ignore the multipli multiplicative constant of one half. So, so, so even though this is one half times n squared times n, the the big O, the the the, the growth rate in terms of how it's going to grow uh, with with a change in your input size is n squared still. All right. 
So, um, so yeah, if, if you go back to um, our output for that one that I kind of skipped over, but, but yeah, you see the, the expected, um, I should have left this as 10,000. So, you know, it's big O of, of, of n squared, so, so it is 10,000, but, but the actual number of operations is n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus that one constant one, the initialization of the B. So it's 5,050 plus uh, another one with the actual number of operations you do for that kind of pattern. But that's still a big O of, of n squared algorithm uh, in that case. All right. Um, okay, so let's go back. So I kind of um, um, I looked at linear order n. Uh, order n grows slower than n squared. Uh, so so n squared. Um, um, is 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 a is is a is a is a faster uh, growing. Um, um, uh, order time uh, you know time growth than than um, than than linear than order in okay so um, here here's one that's actually f uh, uh, faster than linear um, and we've seen an example of this the a logarithmic time algorithm so logarithmic time complexity all right so uh, any time you can t you take your problem size of size n. Uh, and instead of having to search through every item uh, one by one, like in linear, uh, if instead you can do something like um, um, eliminate half of the items from consideration at every step, uh, then you're going to have a logarithmic algorithm, so log in, in uh, log two algorithm in, in that case. Okay, so um, the the binary search algorithm that we looked at is the the quintessential, you know, it's, it's the, the the prime example of a log two. Uh, order or an order log two algorithm, so a, a, an order log two, um, a, a big O log two um, uh, logarithmic time algorithm, right? Because for binary search, uh, every time you look at the midpoint of the unsearched portion of the list, um, and from that you can eliminate, you know, so the item you're searching for is either lo less or bigger than that midpoint item. So if it's bigger, you can ignore all the smaller items in the midpoint. Uh, and, and, and search again on the items that are bigger than that, um, and vice versa, right? So, um, so let, let's let's just step in now. Let's look at an example of, of what, I, what I did there. Oh, sorry, I want to step in that. Well, so I'll go up here. Um, So here, here's the logarithmic algorithm, so log in algorithm. So the, the pattern is it's a loop, so you do have to be careful. I mean, not every loop is linear, so not every loop um, um, uh, results in um, a, an order in. So in this case, the loop goes from 1 to n, but every time uh, we're uh, multiplying, instead of adding 1 to the, our index variable, iter in this case, we're multiplying it by 2. So the first time it's 1, and then 2, then 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So that, this is going to only go, uh, this, this, inside this loop is only going to execute log base 2 of n times, right? So the log base 2 of 100, so that's 2 raised to what power is 100? So, you know, 2 raised to the, uh, the, the 8 um, is uh, 64. Um, or, uh, 2 raised to the, the 6 is 64, so, so it's around 6 or 7, basically, right? So, so this loop will only execute 6 or 7 times, right? It'll be the maximum of that. So I, I think if I, did my, if, I, if, I, if I did my binary right, um, it is 7 times, right? But that's a much slower, that's a much lower number of times this loop happened, you know, that it's a much slower growth rate than order n, you know. So if instead of being 100, n was uh, a million, that's 10 to the 6. Um, um, if this was log base 10, then we'd only have to do this loop six times. So log base 2, I think it's 20, 2 to the 20 approximately. So instead of doing it a million times for, for linear, uh, if we're doing this uh, log 2, uh, so n is a million, we'd only execute like six times, right? So th this grows much slower in terms of your time complexity than, than even linear time. Um, so, um, and, and, you know, this is not the only way you can get this pattern. So you can commonly get this pattern from recursive algorithms. Uh, so recursive binary search would do the same thing. 
um, or you know the, the binary search algorithm that we looked at. So, um, 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 so for the binary search, you would be looping, uh, but you would loop just when uh, the the when the number of items in the remaining portion of the list reached one. But every time through the loop, you'd be selecting a midpoint um, and then changing your left and right to eliminate half of the items in the uh, the list from the search. So every time you do the loop, only half of the items remain. So uh, that's another way you can get logarithmic, uh, log two um, uh, growth rates um, in your algorithm. So, so yeah, let's just uh, print that out. Um, so for the login, yeah, so I, so I was right. Uh, it happened uh, seven times plus the, the one the, the one constant at the beginning was still in count. So the seven plus one are the actual number of times. The, the, the theoretically, uh, uh, the two raised to the 6.6 .6 gets you 100, right? So it's so a log of a, log base two of 100 is 6.6. .6. So usually you have to do the max of, the, max of this. Uh, so, so a loop like I showed you is gonna run seven times. Um, so you have to, to take the ceiling of this to see how many times the loop will actually run if you need to count up actual number of iterations. Um, um, all right, and then, um, so then another one besides logarithmic time is uh, in login time, okay? So uh, in login um, time, um, so, uh, this week, uh, we, we, our programming assignment, we're going to be looking at um, a better sorting algorithm than like the bubble sort. Uh, so the best sorting algorithms work in in login time. Now, in login time uh, is a better growth rate, so it's slower than in squared, okay? So because login grows much slower than in, um, so um, it, login times in is slower than in times in, right? So, so we consider in login to be a, a, quite a bit of a big improvement um, over uh, in squared. So again, for a million items, an in squared algorithm, you know, a sorting algorithm is going to have to do a million squared or um, uh, ten to the twelve. Um, um, you know, so a million, a million, right? But an in login algorithm, remember, the log uh, in uh, is about twenty for a million, so. Uh, in login only does 20 million, so it's still pretty close to uh, to linear time. You know, it's, it's it's like multiplying just by a constant factor of 20, and, and and the log grows really slowly. So in login algorithms are, are good uh, in terms of um, uh, their performance, right? Um, they're, they're not they're, they're almost as good as linear as log as as big O of n, right? So uh, let's, let's step in there. Uh, let me step in, make sure I step in there this time. So the common pattern for in log in is, is you have an outer loop that does the same thing we did for the logarithmic, but it has an inner loop that performs in times, okay? Uh, or vice versa. So the, um, the, 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 the good sorting algorithms that we're going to look at this week, like um, uh, merge sort or quick sort, they have an outer loop that happens uh, in linear time, that happens in times, but the inner loop um, happens uh, only uh, log n times, right? So anyway, by, by that multiplicative rule four, the outer loop is in, the inner loop is log n, so that these two loops combined, you know, when we multiply them together, is big O of n times log n. So, so it's an O in log n plus our uh, in, uh, initializations plus the order one here, right? So we expect this for size 100 to be um, the six times a hundred, um, so about six hundred times for this operation to occur. Actually, the inner loop is going to happen seven times again. The the, the ceiling of that. So this will happen seven hundred times plus one, right? So let's show the output of that. So yeah, we get seven hundred one. You know, expected the the O in log n would be six hundred sixty four, right? Because uh, log two of n is six point six times n is a hundred. So. Um, all right, and then as a final one, um, let's look at exponential growth. So um, exponential growth happens any time most brute force algorithms uh, tend to look like uh, exponentially growing. They tend to be exponentially growing algorithms, okay? So I'll give an example of that here real quickly. So this algorithm, so, so something like 2 to the n, 
So, so notice here, instead of like in square where the exponent is a constant too, here the exponent uh, grows uh, as our input side grows, okay? So this grows much faster than in cubed or in squared algorithms, okay? Um, another um, algorithm that's considered to be exponential is, is in factorial. In factorial is even worse than, than, than exponential, okay? So, so it's even worse than exponential if you have a, a factorial growth uh, algorithm. So um, let's just step in here. Um, so I had some examples. So if you don't know what I mean by brute source, brute brute force, uh, here's one example. So the 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 eight the the a naive way to implement uh, the eight queens problem. If you're familiar with this, try to put eight queens on a board. So that none of them are attacking each other, is to realize is to use this this data structure here, and to realize that that only you know every every column um, has to have only one queen on it. Okay, so then you represent this as the row that you put uh, each um, the the queen in each column in. So this represents that the the queen in column one was in row one, the queen in column two was in row two. The queen in column three was placed on row four, and so on, okay? So a naive algorithm is just to start by generating all possible queen placements. So this represents all queens are in row one. And then you test that, whether that's, uh, whether that's a uh, board position where none of the queens are attacking each other. Now, if you do that, of course, you, get, um, you have to do uh, uh, eight raised to the power of eight, so it's actually n to the power of n. It's not 2 to the n, it's n to the power of n. But that's, that's again, an example of an exponential algorithm because you're going to have 8 raised to the power of 8. Uh, you're going to have to go through 8 raised to the power of 8 um, possible board positions to, uh, to find all of the valid ones where the 8 queens are not attacking each other, right? which is what the problem here is about. Right? So another common one is, is if you implement recursion, where you solve the, the big problem by breaking it into two smaller n minus one size problems and then recursively solve those. So a naive implementation of the Towers of Hanoi that uses recursi recursion does that. That's also a two to the n. Um, uh, that's, that's an actual two to the n instead of n, n raised to the n. But, but that's an, also another common pattern where you get exponential growth rate. So recursive, recursion where you're solving two n minus one subproblems um, um, recursively. So, um, so I, I showed that example here. So, so in this case, the, we, we say that we're doing a recursive algorithm. If the base case is zero, we just re, um, return one. Otherwise, we call ourselves recursively twice on a, a problem of size n minus one. So it's a size smaller. Um, so 2 to the 100 is a number with 31 digits. So if you actually left in as 100 here, your computer would um, be calculating for a long time. Uh, in fact, actually, probably it would blow your stack. You probably would run out of memory before you actually reach the end of your calculation, even for an input size of just 100. Right? So, so but anyway, if you do like 15 instead, uh, if we can handle it. So, um, oh yeah, I did step over that. So even for just 2 to the 15, so even for just an input size of 15, um, we're doing uh, over 30,000. So we're doing even much, much more than our n squared algorithm for, uh, for um, an input size that's one-tenth or, well, uh, uh, less than one-fifth uh, um, of, of the uh, input size for the n squared there. So. All right, so uh, kind of just summarize this before I go go on to the next point here. So I mean, it is important. I, I think this is very useful. This, this is a skill that that will 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 help you a lot if you're going to get into software or computing systems. Is to understand these basic algorithms. So what the difference is between uh, logarithmic time versus linear big O n versus n log n versus a quadratic time algorithm in squared or a cubic time algorithm in cubed versus an exponential algorithm like to the n. Right. So, so you know, in practice, uh, so, so, so in the theory of computer science, the theory of algorithm analysis, the, the, they look at a lot more complex cases like that. But in practice, I mean, that if you know those and kind of understand the difference between those, 
th those will be what you'll almost always run into in real implemented systems. Some some example of, of those basic ones that I just talked about. So, um, all right. So, so uh, let's look at a little bit more uh, detail. Let's compare the uh, performance of those basic algorithms that we looked at. So, this is this is pretty similar to uh, when the figure from the supplementary textbook that I'm having uh, my class uh, go through on this class, except for I simplified it pretty much so I'm only using those basic ones that I talked about. So we have, uh, we have a logarithmic algorithm, which I didn't label, so that's the, the kind of the blue one here, and then a linear in, then in log n, uh, in squared, in cubed, 2n, and in factorial here. All right, so, so the first thing is, in, you know, our input size only goes up to 15 here. So this is going to be the number of operations for each of these for a size of, of in, size input 15. For, for in cubed uh, and our exponential and the factorial, it's so big that I just cut it off. So, so these take many more operations than 500, and I'll show that in a second here. But these grow much faster, uh, although it's a little, uh, so I'll show it in a second here. So n cubed and n squared, even though they look like really big differences here, these things, you know, most, most people that are designing algorithms don't consider an n cubed really that bad. I mean, it, it's still practical to do n cubed algorithms even on really large inputs, like for matrix factorization or things that are matrix multiplication. Uh, but uh, but but two exponential algorithms or factorial algorithms are not practical. You can only do toy problems, you know. So, for example, the traveling sales. To, to the, another example of a exponential algorithm is you might have heard of the traveling salesman's um, um, problem. So there are algorithms that can solve that, uh, not to, to find the the best possible um, path. So the one that has the absolute minimum time, uh, now, and those work better. Those work in like a in in squared or, or uh, in squared log in time, I think. But if you want to, if you have to get the absolutely best path, the one that has the minimum for the traveling salesman problem, uh, it's known to be, uh, or well, it's, it's believed to be a um, um, exponential complexity. You can't do any better than kind of a brute force um, um, search on that. So. Um, okay, so um, anyway, so the, the book makes a, also makes a similar point, uh, but using a different one. So uh, what you should understand about the growth rate of these and why we consider n log n different from n squared. So knowing that something has an upper bound of n squared versus has an upper bound of n log n versus something has an in, upper bound of n cubed, uh, no matter what the constants are or additional expressions, um, is very useful. Okay. So, so like this. So, so this is an example. I've only just used constants here, but but I could have done the same thing. Like, so if you compare like a, a an n log n algorithm, but let's say we multiply it by a constant factor. I just did it three in this case. Okay. Um, so I mean, it's it's worse than than n squared in terms of the number of operations up to a point, up to about an input size of ten. But at that point, it gets better. I mean, it, it's 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 better. It's it's a faster performer than n squared. Okay, and the point with um, the the those rules, those simplifying rules that we gave. So if I, if I had an algorithm that was a hundred n log n plus one million n plus uh, ten million. Okay, so so I have uh, a big multi multiplier, hundred n. Uh, plus, I have some other lower, uh, slower growing terms. So, uh, what, what did I say? A million plus a million n plus uh, plus a big initialization, uh, 100 million. So even that, its growth rate is still n log n. So if if you make your n big enough, so even that, no matter how big you make this constant in front of n log n, once n gets large enough, uh, this will go below. Uh, n squared, so it grows slower than n squared, and for for so so no no matter how big your multiplicative constant is or other terms are that are slower growth rates, eventually um, uh, it will be faster than an n squared algorithm. All right, so that that's why the, these 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 big O's these 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 time complexities are important. Right, so if I know it's an n log n versus n squared, that tells me something important about 
my algorithms. Same for if you look at n squared versus n cubed. Okay, so I'm making the same point. But uh, if, if I have an n squared algorithm, um, you know, so even if I have like an n cubed algorithm that's only one tenth, you know, so my multiplicative constant is making it um, um, slower by, by one tenth than than a standard n cubed. So n squared does worse than, than n cubed for a while, but at some point that n cubed is going to be worse than my n squared. Okay, and it doesn't make it doesn't matter how small I make this one one thousandth, one one millionth. You know, um, as long as it's just a constant greater than zero, um, um, at some point that n cubed algorithm, once n is big enough, is going to be slower than than an n squared algorithm. All right. So, so that's that's an important thing to understand. So so if you didn't quite follow me on this, you know, you make certain you kind of go back and, and read our textbook and and, and and think about that. You know, so. Uh, back back to these these exponential algorithms. So if I'd actually, um, uh, I mean, I'm still cutting off here. I'm not. I'm uh, I'm cutting off higher. So instead of 500, I'm cutting I'm cutting off at 50,000 for the number of operations. So even that is not big enough for n factorial. It's still when we have uh, input size of 15, uh, it's still much bigger than even 50,000. Although you can now see the the two n and the n cubed, so this does give a better feeling for n cubed and n squared and n to the fourth are still these are these are uh, if you ever heard a polynomial in the the p versus n p um, question in theoretical computer science, this is this is what it's talking about. Polynomial time uh, complexity algorithms are things like that that have a uh, that, that are polynomials that have a a constant for the exponent. So something like order, uh, so uh, has a time complexity of n to the fifth plus, uh, plus uh, three n cubed minus four n squared. So that's a polynomial. That's known as a polynomial time complexity. That, those are considered always uh, in, uh, much better than, than anything that's exponential. So np stands for non-polynomial in the p versus uh, np. Uh, question. So things that are polynomial or non-polynomial are, are exponential, like n factorial to the n, um, and they are usually going to be impractical for anything but like toy problems with only you know a hundred inputs or ten input, depending on what you're doing. So. Um, all right. So um, Another thing that's related to what I was just talking about, uh, again, related to this idea of growth rates. So, so this figure, again, is also directly from our supplementary textbook, except for I added a little bit um, for, for the sake of discussion here. So if we want to compare uh, uh, an order n to an order n log n to, to n squared, n cubed, or exponential algorithms, uh, this is the correct way to think about it. Um, so in this example, we were talking about having a computer that that um, that increased ten times in speed. Okay, so if beforehand, if I had an algorithm that was linear but ten n, um, and if beforehand my computer was fast enough to um, um, process an input of, of of a thousand items and whatever my time limit was, like let's say a minute or a second or whatever. So so for my ten n algorithm, a thousand. If, if my computer Increases in speed by one order of magnitude. Um, I I will be able to uh, process ten thousand, so ten times that. Okay, so the ratio. So, so uh, for a linear algorithm, the ratio of what I could do before, for whatever my my algorithm was, to what I can do now when, when I increase by some factor, like a factor of ten, is ten. And it doesn't matter what your multiplicative constant. So this is one reason why for these these growth rates, the the multiplicative constant doesn't matter as far as, as, as comparing the, the growth rates of these algorithms. So if I have a 20n 20 20 algorithm, of course, I mean, it's worse than 10n. So in that same amount of time on my original computer, I could only maybe uh, um, process 500 versus uh, 1,000, right? But this is linear in time. So if my um, uh, computer increases in speed by 10 times, it will also be able to go from a problem size of 500 to 5,000 in the same amount of time. So again, my, 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 the problem size I can handle also increased again by 10, uh, by a factor of 10, the same um, it, as, as, as my, the speed of my computer increased. Okay? And, and that's because it, it's linear, right? So, so there's a linear relationship. So the, the 
all these others are nonlinear. So, so, uh, so, so everything uh, in log n logarithmic is below linear. But uh, I didn't show one of those. Um, but um, in log n, uh, let, let me go to n squared uh, first, and then we'll come back n squared and n cubed, and then we'll come back to n log n. So in squared, um, um, on my original computer, um, you know, and, and this is this is assuming kind of the same problem. But if my algorithm to, to solve the same problem was an in, it was a two n squared algorithm, uh, on my original computer, I would have been able to process an input size of seventy. Um, in, in some time limit, right? So now if I have a computer uh, that's 10 times faster, n squared would allow me to, to do 223 if, if you work out um, uh, of these, right? Uh, because it's going to be the square root of 10 times n, right? Um, but that that's not... A, so, so for a, a, an increase in the speed of my computer by 10, 10 times, I, I, I was only able to, to handle problems that are three times bigger in the same amount of time, okay? So n squared does a lot worse than, than a linear, an order n algorithm, right? So uh, increasing my computer speed by an order of magnitude only allows me to, you know, by, by 10 only allows me to uh, increase my problem size I can handle by three every time. So if I, if I get a, a, a 10 times faster computer again, um, I... I'm only going to be able to, to handle a problem size of about 600 in the same amount of time, 660, 670, okay? That's, that's what they say. In cube, the, the same thing, so, um, but, you know, it's going to, it's going to be worse, so um, um, uh, if my speed of my computer increased by 10, uh, it's going to be the cube root of 10 is, is the, the, the size of, of my new problem that I can handle in the same amount of time. So I'll only be able to handle... A, uh, problems are a little bit over twice as big as what I could before if I increase by an order of magnitude as a speed of 10, okay? Um, and logarithmic um, is going to be somewhere between n and, um, and n squared is, is what this means here. So if my constant was really, really big, I, I could push this to be pretty close to linear. Um, but if, if my constant um, is, is non-existent, uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, um, if it's really, really big, I could push this to be close to n squared. Um, so square root of 10. Um, and if it's, if it's like one, 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 one thousandths or something like that, it's going to approach a linear. It's going to be almost linear, even for really, really big um, problems of size n. So. Uh, but, um, but yeah, on average, it's about 7.3. So. Um, and exponential algorithms, forget about it. So... Um, um, increasing my, my speed of my computer by 10 only increases my problem size by three items. I can only do a problem of, of, of size three in the same amount of time. Um, and, and, you know, if you work that out, I mean, even if you... So, so if I want to double the size of my problem, so if, if I want to go from, from a, a problem size of, of, of 13 to 26... Uh, I don't need a, a, pro, a computer that's 10 times faster or 100 times faster. I need a, a computer that's 10 to the 8 times faster, approximately. Um, 100 million, if you work that out. Because log... Uh, um, uh, 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 so, 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 yeah, so, so that's, that's the basic idea. So, so, so exponential, you know, um, again, the point of that is that it just... Um, uh, they're impractical, you know. Um, so even so, so you're not going to be able to solve real problems with an exponential algorithm, even if you can get uh, an unreasonably fast supercomputer, right? You're going to have to do something about the algorithm, get a better algorithm. So, so that's that's why non-polynomial time algorithms are of, of a lot of interest. Is there some way to find a better algorithm for those that that is run, will run in polynomial time? Um, all right, so uh, as a last thing, kind of common misunderstandings. Um, so, um, so, so this is a big one. I, I mean, I, I pretty much skipped over this. Uh, the, our, our, the, the supplemental reading I gave you did talk about uh, big O versus uh, big omega versus big theta, okay? The thing about this is, is that 
most of that is really only when you get into theoretical computer science. So if you take a graduate course in algorithm analysis where you need to uh, work on the theory of like the P versus NP problem or something like that. In almost all practical situations that I've seen, though, the um, uh, it, it's easy to recognize the true growth rate. So if, if you have complete knowledge of the code, so if you, if you have the actual code, you can, you can analyze it and tell exactly what its growth rate is. And in that case, the upper and lower bounds, so your big O and your omega are going to be the same. So when we know that the upper and lower bounds are the same for uh, an algorithm, we, we, just, we, we, we can say that it has a big theta for its growth rate. Um, uh, so it would have been more correct when I talked about this all in this video previously if I had been calling that a big theta of n instead of, of big O of n. But you will find that uh, um, computer scientists and, and, and working software engineers in, in the real world usually use big O. When, but, but they usually mean that because they're, they're talking about known algorithms like a, a quicksort algorithm or something. So it's known to have both an upper and a lower bound of n log n. So it's actually a big theta a growth rate of n log n. Um, so it won't, it won't do worse than n log n, but it won't do better than n log n. So. Uh, don't confer the uh, upper and lower bounds with the best, worst, and average case performance. So, so big O and big theta, that, that's talking about uh, upper bounds and lower bounds. So big theta means when both the upper and lower bound um, are known to be the same for an algorithm. Now, we, we've, we've talked about best, worst, and average case uh, last week before. So, um, um, and I already talked about in this video. So, uh, I mean, be, the... the um, even though, so be, you know, worst case doesn't happen when um, um, when you have a bigger input. Okay, so, so you're not going to get your worst performance when 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 you have uh, n that's that's billions. You know, your input size is billions. Okay, that's confusing uh, worst case with upper bound. Okay, you're going to have your worst case depending on the, the 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 type of the input. So again, back to the linear search. Uh, you're going to have your worst case if you're searching for an item that's not present. In that case, you have to search all the, the items, no matter what number of items you have in your list. Okay, that's, that's an example of worst case. And the analysis of worst case for that is that worst case is O-N, whereas the, the analysis for uh, average case, it has an upper bound of O-N divided by 2, or, or one-half O-N, because on average, you only have to search half of the items. But the best case um, has uh, O1. So the best case is that the item always happens to be the first item that you're going to search for. You just do one search, so, you, so you're done in constant time, O1. Um, so so you, you can, uh, the, the other way of saying that is that um, um, you, you always have separate analysis for the best, worst, and average case, okay? So I can have a, 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 a big O analysis for the worst case, uh, um, um, a big omega analysis on so my upper and lower bounds for the worst case, um, and if those are the same, I'll be able to state my big theta for the worst case. Same for average and, and best case. Okay. And usually, worst, uh, usually best case is not all that interesting. So usually, you need to be conservative when you're trying to do an analysis of, of, of your algorithm. So most conservative, most useful is usually the most informed is usually the average case uh, because that's going to what what's what's going to normally be happening, assuming that, that you know what the average case is um, appropriately, right? But if you need to be conservative, then you want to find out what input is going to cause your algorithm perf to perform at the worst, right? So, so for example, um, the, the quicksort algorithm that, you should, that, that we're going to be working on for the assignment for this class, uh, hopefully I'm remembering this right. Um, so, uh, but I mean, it has an average case of n log n, and the best, but and its best case um, is n log n. It won't really do better. But its worst case is if you give it um, pathological input um, and it picks a, a pivot that's really bad all the time. Uh, the worst case for the quicksort can be as slow as a, as a n squared. So, so it can. Um, um, in, in, in certain input cases de devolve down to close to n square performance. So. Um, okay, yeah, and I already mentioned that. So best case does not occur when the input size is small, and the worst case doesn't occur when the input size is huge. So. Um, all right, 
so probably went longer than I want to. Uh, but yeah, in summary, I mean, this the, the 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 topic about the algorithm analysis is important, not just because we're also going to be using it more in this class when we talk about data structures, different data structures, and what their performance characteristics are. But but in a practical sense, uh, you will run into this, um, and if you know this, you'll be a better uh, uh, person uh, that can work, you know, that, that that works in computers and technology. So you'll understand things that people that don't understand these ideas of growth rates are unable to uh, uh, to figure out, right? So so I think we covered all these, and I hope you know. The, to me, I think the most important thing is that is looking at these exact these actual examples of what we mean by different kinds of growth rate complex time complexities. Uh, in actual code, so what the patterns are of, of a linear growth rate versus a, an n squared growth rate, right? And also being familiar with some of, of common uh, algorithms that have those kinds of um, growth rates. So you know the, the the you know a linear search is a, is a typical example of a linear growth rate algorithm, and, and a, a binary search is a typical example of when you get logarithmic growth. Um, okay. That's it for this video. Probably went a little bit longer, but uh, hopefully that, that hits some of the main points and helps you out a bit understanding uh, this, this topic about the uh, analysis of algorithms. I will see you in the next video.